<laughs> Welcome. I'm here with Ryan. My name's Sam. We're gonna have a, a healthy discussion about religion. Um, I guess if you want to introduce yourself, and then uh, I can introduce myself, and then if we have any questions, I guess interject or bounce them off each other. Yeah, sure. Um, I, I won't say too much in the intro. Just I'm, a, you know, young adult. Um, I'm a Christian. I've been a Christian. Um, as far as what I consider a real Christian for about eight years and grew up, you know, Catholic and kind of lukewarm, like, you know, the majority of population in the U S but really started, um, in my twenties, considering Christianity as a real, um, viable worldview. And, mm -hmm. um, basically that's there's some more um you know i was dabbled in like new age spirituality and buddhism and some other stuff but um basically came to believe the um faith of christianity about 22 and i'm 30 now okay so yeah that's pretty much it all right well uh i know i know you did ask uh right before we started recording about like how long i've been streaming and then i'll uh i guess add in their uh religious background if you will um so streaming for probably 13 14 years uh oh you're an og yeah i've been on i've been streaming since periscope came out uh on twitter which a lot of people forgot about um and yeah, i don't even know about it. <laughs> it it was i think it was one of the first uh live streaming platforms it was in in uh in, not ingrained uh it was attached to twitter um so any live streams you could do would just notify any twitter followers and uh facebook and instagram all that uh so yeah I've, I've been on the internet for a long long time and uh i think what comes with that is like kind of understanding how how people people's perceptions are and kind of yeah the using, landscape how it's yeah. changed yeah it, it definitely has changed i mean i, I want to say somewhat for the better but uh you know they, everybody's different so um yeah back in the back in the runescape days just a yeah. bunch of crap walkers yeah 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 like og youtube when when it was just like uh a a cesspool of like uh misogyny and racism and edgelord yeah. and shit so yeah. um but uh so I've been, yeah, I've been doing that a long time. Uh, been doing haunted houses since I was very, very young. My dad's a special effects artist. So that's, oh, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's where the, the makeup comes from. Um, I got popular on social media as a result of a, a video going viral and um, decided to, I guess, like, see where it went. Uh, I, I don't even want to say capitalize because initially I, I was not getting paid for any of it and I just was like this right. is a cool way to connect with people so um and when was that that was the video going viral i think was 2011 2012 somewhere oh around still there. a long time ago yeah wow. yeah um so and you know like with social media a lot of the time like people will uh it will ebb and flow uh with with popularity and i mean where, that, where did it go viral like vine or something uh facebook actually oh um, facebook yeah it was it was a video uh I, I called it bad bitches and it was that uh bray i don't know it's a rap song ray summer i can never say his last name i always say summer murder yeah, yeah and it's uh the bad bitches are the only things that i like was playing in the background and i was just smoking a cigarette i had prosthetic teeth in um and that was it, it there was no words spoken um i'll do it yeah but it just uh that one hit like i think like six million and as a result i was able to like collect a lot of people and over the years kind of uh fine tune it i guess yeah so um in regards to religion uh this is the part that kind of throws people for a loop so as i mentioned dad's a special effects makeup artist he's been one for like 20 years my mother is actually currently a franciscan carmelite nun uh she moved to wow. armenia uh for uh, i think at the start of covid uh she just moved nice. back to the to the states she is one of those people and this is where i get a lot of uh my um exposure to religion so she bounced around between like she was the order i like to go in she started as uh she was wiccan 
then she was lesbian yep. then she was uh christian then she was lutheran then she was catholic and then she landed on franciscan carmelite so uh got a so lot still of catholic yeah to this yeah, day yeah very catholic yeah wow so that's a good background um yeah. so you're not you're not you're not in any way a noob to the no, uh, religion no, no yeah and i mean i was definitely raised under like as as we would you know she would jump around searching for her sense of belonging to the world for lack of a better term um which is which is fine and i don't mean that in like a condescending way towards her um but you know i got i got exposed to all i think there was at one point she even went into one of those uh groups that like convents in, no 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 one of the groups that talked in tongues she was in a convent uh for a okay. while but yeah she was in, i vividly remember the the tongues speaking group that was interesting uh, more charismatic yeah 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 so yep um I know I figured we'll we'll start with uh if you want because I know you had three three primary questions and I know as you do that that these can go into like so many different right subcategories yeah, branch like, off yeah, yeah. um oh. you know I looked at your questions and I think yours will probably be quicker okay than mine um right. so and there's one I I'd, I want to save for the end because that will probably take longer. Okay. Um, so where let me pull these up. Okay, yeah. So one will be quick. So we could we could start with yours, I guess, if if you if you're That's cool with that, and yep. then and then actually, um, one of our questions kind of uh, coincides. They could, yeah, yeah. So the first one I think would be. <clears throat> pretty straightforward is you asked if god was proven to not exist would you accept that and would you be able to lead a functioning life from that point forward um so quick answer yes and i think it would be a lot easier for me um mm -hmm. now to not make it a huge long answer a lot of my struggles um i also suffered from lyme disease uh really bad chronically oh okay or i'm i'm still suffering from it but it's better okay but that was the hardest point of my life both physically and it just made it i i would say 10 times worse because of my faith and i would i would be thinking most of the time i was like if only I just thought this were an accident and this had this is just random chance, it would be so much easier for me to digest mm -hmm. because the thought that an all powerful God looked down at me and said, This is what I'm gonna allow to happen yeah. to you and I am not gonna give you a way out. Because yeah. that I was begging for ways out mm -hmm. on any point, you know, at both sides, you know, whether it be medicine spirituality god healings i've gone to you know all of those tried every basically avenue that mm. you could and came to the realization that there was just nothing i could do because it's a disease that just the medical field just isn't advanced enough science yeah. just hasn't come far enough to understand it and um that made it really difficult so i think that and and other people i've you know i've been in communication with others that have struggled like me and for some reason they it's bad obviously for them but they didn't get this this deep resentful bitterness towards god i would say yeah that i had because i was christian and so that made it a lot worse so, were a lot of them christian or kind of mixed bag no not really okay um like the people i talked to that also suffered with lyme um more like you know like maybe they try it on for a for a, a month or so not like real like yeah just see how the hat fits so to speak <laughs> yeah 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 but um yeah so i i i think uh there is some things i i understand your your question as for like a broad um audience i mm -hmm. think a lot of people really connect to their faith and they yeah. would have a really hard time accepting that um that's not true and there mm -hmm. could be another possibility um i think those people probably 
I mean, obviously, I th they, they'd be fine leading a normal life, but I think it would be, um, they would have a cognitive bias to hold on to their beliefs, even if it was proven yeah. some way. Um, they like, almost have a refusal to, like, even if they were like, oh, okay, you've shown me the proof, but they still would continue to be like, mm. maybe subconsciously right. or non-verbally, uh, just um, Yeah, subconsciously, probably also consciously, if they would admit it, but the bigger thing is the bigger philosophical question i think here which is harder to tackle this is going to take a really long time is like what is proof and what is enough proof mm -hmm. um i mean there's proof that there's the i've heard the most simplest to the most complex answers for proof to why god exists and why god doesn't exist yeah so it's almost like um nutrition where it's basically like you just stack your evidence and there's so many well how do i I'm, what i mean by nutrition is like no one really knows what's healthy for you like there's people that will say apples are terrible for you and you know fruit is bad uh only eat meat or there's the the vegans that say don't eat me you know mm -hmm. it's like they have their science their claims and their proof and their studies for backing all of their claims but if if these scientific studies are contradicting each other then either they're both wrong yeah. or none of them are yeah like none of them are right or What's they're the both actual right actual reality right it's I, much more nuanced than that so yeah no i i, I think it's uh there's a there's a really it's it's difficult to find like a uh definitive answer to a lot of this stuff uh that's why i find it fascinating because like you know at the end of the day like you said uh it's it's just stacking evidence or you know right and and with religion i think part of it is uh or not part of it a lot a lot of people who prescribe it's uh their their evidence that they're stacking is personal experience because i've seen even in, in the video that you found me from uh people telling me like listen i know i've seen demons and i'm like well that's a personal experience it's not a scientifically i don't think we can quantify that um so no i i do agree with you yeah so that that's we'll probably talk about that stuff later on because mm -hmm. that's really interesting i'm curious to hear your beliefs on that um but the uh the one the next i mean if you're good with that yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm good with that question, but th uh, the third question you, you asked, why does an all-powerful God need helpers? Mm -hmm. And it would eliminate, well, I guess if he didn't have helpers, it would eliminate the problems of underperforming or mutinous behavior among the angels. Um, so I don't know the answer to this, but I mean, I can give you my, um, the way I see it. Yeah. I don't, I don't know why that was one of the... <laughs> You want to like hear my deep, dark, nihilistic thoughts when I was really sick and going through this. I, you know, I had tons of time to think. I was in, in bed all day, and I would just think like, why did God? Why did you create all of this? Like, why did you make anything? Because mm -hmm. I would just look at the world and I would, you know, look at the scripture, and it was just all, all negativity, and it just seemed all doom and and just a problem mm -hmm. that didn't need to happen. It's like you what was it that you were bored that you needed to you know make more creatures to interact with and i don't know why he created other um what you call them beings or yeah um yeah so i don't know why but if um if we're gonna accept that other beings do exist um and they're created by something then i guess we could kind of come to the logical conclusion that if they're able to basically the free will argument that if they're able to freely act then mm -hmm. there's going to be some dissonance or um you know confusion yeah. or disagreements which um god could either which i think this is what you're kind of asking is and this is what i thought too is why does god give give us free will yeah if we only use it for our demise and the demise of others um why not make us easily manipulate manipulated like animals where we're basically just driven on instinct which you know some naturalist science uh, atheists do believe that we are just 
animals driven on instinct. Um, I don't believe that, but we could get into that later. Mm. Um, so I guess, uh, I guess the, the answer is it probably would be easier, but, yeah. <laughs> but he, he, uh, I, I think there will be a lot of, a lot of souls that are glad that he did make us. And I think you maybe would even, if you can admit that you're a, uh, or let's say if you were to accept the premise that you are created by God and, or you're, you're given a life mm. that you enjoy it, or you are glad that you're created. I'm, I'm that's, that's kind of a question. Yeah. I mean, wait, so, so the question is, uh, like, are, yeah. Are you glad to be alive? Basically? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think that's, I think most people, not all, I, I will, I will openly admit that. But yeah, I think uh, most people that are leading somewhat of a functioning life um, and have some semblance of uh, of of joy, um, they will they will be appreciative of their life. Uh, so yeah, yeah, that's well, that's good. Um, but yeah, so the the third question, which is the the hardest one. Um, and it's it's uh definitely up for debate in the this is like one of the biggest debated things among Christian communities, which I'm glad that you have somewhat of a, a background of different um groups of Christianity and different churches. Cause um you asked, do you believe someone deserves to go to hell for non belief if they lead even if they lead a morally sound life mm -hmm. according to the Christian faith? Um so do you have any, uh, do you want to ex expand on that a little bit more so I could address it? Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. like, I guess if I were to put it like as simple as possible in terms of, uh, like, let's say if they were to adhere to pretty much, uh, the 10 commandments without mm -hmm. lacking, uh, or removing the aspect of, of worshiping or acknowledging God right, as the, the first creator. commandment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and doing all that, like, uh, cause I've asked, I've asked that before to, to people and, uh, that, that always seems like a hard one. So I'm always interested in terms of, uh, people's response in that. Does that kind of elaborate a little bit more? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll like, I'll answer it the way I see it. Um, so I have a huge problem understanding hell. It's something that really bothers me a lot and it makes me, um pessimistic when i read scripture it it it's it's sad it's just yeah it you feel powerless because i mean if if god here's well here's the christian way of understanding hell so there's basically there's there's people send themselves to hell or god sends people to hell mm -hmm. um it's kind of both if you really like think about it philosophically, because if God knows what we're going to do, yeah. then you could argue that by allowing us to do what we will as some uh, doctrines that we'll, we'll talk about do as thou will, um, then we're going indefinitely. We're going to inevitably, we're going to lead ourselves to a place that he could have avoided us of yeah. going. Um, I, the, the core with the non-belief, um, it's talked about in the Bible as like some have ears to ears to hear and others don't. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there's an important part of like the gift of faith it, as far as Christianity, the correct Christianity, the way I understand it, um, as it's biblically taught. Um, they didn't, they didn't look at it as like this, um, this confidence or, or trust it when the word, um, I believe it was like pistis in Greek. And it was almost a divine act of faith, something outside of human confidence. And the way I could, uh, explain it is like, say, I don't know if you've, you've played sports, but there's like. There's the guys that try to trick themselves that they can still, you know, win. Mm -hmm. And 
if if you would imagine that you were down like hundreds of points where there's no possible way that you could come back mm -hmm. trying to trick yourself into believing that you can win would be out of your willpower and that's kind of what the type of faith that is required for christianity um is needed and that's a gift from god so it's not something that we can just manifest ourselves okay i get what you're saying so like it, it i try to i i get it i'm trying to like formulate it another way so if, if somebody listening doesn't understand kind of uh like if if you're in a position i feel like i'm just gonna say the same thing you said in a different uh yeah yeah no i mean i i, I fully understand that it's uh it's 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 something larger it, it comes from a place from what you're describing um mm. that you can't you can't muster control. it up yourself yeah, yeah yeah so it's uh it's, it's not it's in your larger than you um right and you being able to surmount an almost what seems to be insurmountable uh obstacle but that is is that does that sound about right like you're that that gift. well yeah i mean so they would um i mean some of the some of the stories in the bible you know seem a little harsh because there's people that don't believe and they're basically just like like shoot away like mm. you filthy unbelievers like you're 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 useless or you're you're doomed yeah. and that that kind of for for me as a you know 20th cent 21st century man that's been you know kind of um conform to you know sympathy and being nice for people that seems really harsh but um i don't know i mean maybe that that was jesus's way of like he he wasn't going to waste time with people mm -hmm. that he knew were not able to accept it and yeah um i mean see that's the thing like i'm talking to you right now so i don't believe that and i've also seen people like just because someone doesn't believe that doesn't mean i'm not going to still share what i believe in yeah. the faith and possibly i don't know what happens maybe it plants seeds maybe, i mean there's been people that have converted it's not my job to convert you or convince you mm -hmm. it's just i'm just trying to express the way i see the world because it seems like a lot of people's um opinions are influenced by sources outside of themselves and yeah. some of those sources i believe are maleficent and manipulating them to you know steer them towards certain ways yeah um and you know same on my part i'm not just because i'm a christian doesn't mean i'm immune to that i mean it's the same thing i get influenced by speakers and push different sorts of ways yeah um yeah no i think that's good i mean I think it's a good summarization uh all around i uh i but you I, said you, well actually i didn't even answer your question you said do you believe someone deserves oh um, yeah 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 so that's the other thing so who deserves to go to hell so as a critic I, I don't know if you've heard this but um we all deserve to go to hell because mm -hmm. we've all sinned so the gift of eternal life is a is a is a gift is so that, if we were if, if, go sorry ahead. uh i just wanted to ask for clarification is that off of the like when you say we all have sinned is that operating under the guise of of the concept of original sin or no i mean no i mean basically the way there's a popular guy ray comfort and he just basically reads the ten commandments and we've all every everyone's you know committed at least one of those but yeah original sin is basically like we don't even have the ability yeah. not to sin um but if you were to just but here here's the thing that i i'd like to like even um concede like so if you are not a christian you don't believe in the ten commandments like if you're a a satanist or follower of anton Lavey, you know that believes in like some sort of like black bible and has their mm -hmm. own sort of doctrine there's doctrines to to every 
um, faith or, or religion or philosophy, whatever it may be. Yeah. So if you were to judge a person by their own philosophy, though, so that's, I think, a, a better way, but it's more complex. Mm-hmm. Um, so if I were to ask you, have you done anything that you believe is wrong? I mean, no. I think we would all say yes. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So that's outside of even this, like, um, God, this commandments from God that are, you know, imprinted on us or um, forced or given to us to uphold. It's like, even in our hearts, our own conscience, I believe mm. that I th- think every person in the world has, unless you're a complete narcissist, yeah. then <laughs> you believe you've done wrong in your life. No, I can definitely uh, agree with that. Yeah. So, but so even the more like um, the like scientific way I think of it, like this is like probably probably due to my past with in the in all the new age stuff that I've that I was into. But if if you think of like negative energy and the damage that um, sin, or if you want to change the word of sin and just call it like um, negativity or whatever some sort of corruption Mm -hmm. um that 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 could do to your soul or spirit in a a sense of like decaying um i don't believe that karma is is like a perfect science in this world so there's like if if you could think of it like karmic debt Mm -hmm. like hitler i'm sure did not get everything that he deserved in this life yeah um there's lots of good people that we would see as saintly that have a lot of bad, bad stuff happen to them and they don't receive the rewards of good that they've reaped in this life. Um, so there's like, if you're coming from a atheist perspective, then where does all this energy go that, that these people are emanating or responsible for? Like, mm-hmm. is it just given into the world and the world is just you know subject to spit it out or yeah. eat it at will or is it there's some sort of um is it go back to the source of the of the person doing it in some way mm-hmm. and if that's the case then we would you know we would all have some bad coming to us in the afterlife maybe some good too but i don't know how that works yeah no, um, I, I get what you're saying. I I don't honestly have an answer for, uh, you know, like, where does that energy go? Because I, I do prescribe to the, well, I mean, it is a scientific fact that, you know, energy can neither be created or destroyed. So I would, right. I would connect, you know, uh, emotion with that because that, that is an energy. I mean, like, that... I'm pretty sure you can measure that electrically or otherwise, you know, if somebody's really, really angry and you were to connect them to the right, uh, you know, apparatus to be able to measure their anger. Maybe we don't have the ability to do that currently, but you get what I'm saying. Right. Uh, yeah, you know, no, yeah, definitely. Really angry, really hateful, really loving, really empathetic, whatever. And then that person, as you were saying, doesn't doesn't get their dues, so to speak, in this life. Like, where does that go? I honestly have no fucking idea. Um, yeah. I would like to think that it, uh, because I'm my, where my beliefs lie is kind of, uh, is very floaty, I guess, for lack mm-hmm. of a better term. Uh, like I, I know, uh, one of your questions was asking about like angels and demons. And I just, uh, I, I kind of prescribe the same, uh, thing to that as I do with, with most things. I haven't really been um provided proof enough to or experienced it yourself well i mean that's not entirely true because i've had experiences where i can't really explain away but yep. uh contrary to most people mm-hmm. i i still don't i'm not like well that's that <laughs> i i and I, I get very frustrated with with people who attribute when they don't have an answer they immediately attribute to supernatural uh I think that's right. late lazy. Um, I actually, funny enough, um, last week I did uh, Omi TV, which is, I don't know if you're familiar, it's kind of like Omegle uh, or Chat Roulette. Mm-hmm. And oh, yeah, yeah. there was a kid on there, I want to say he's 15, 16. 
uh, I was streaming when when I was doing it, and chat was telling me that he I had talked with him before. I didn't recognize him, but according to them, I had. Uh, he immediately started questioning me about religion, um, and I understand why. You know, they they see the background, whatnot, uh, and calling uh, you a Satanist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that a lot, which is funny because the the everything in the background is specifically placed and specifically chosen. Not a single thing in the background is any correlation to anything imagery wise of Satan at all. None of it. Um, so I always find that I, I've asked people to articulate to me. I'm like, what what is Satanist about? Let me uh I actually don't I don't really know what you're talking about. So let me just pull up. Is it in all your videos? Uh the more recent I just recently updated the uh the background. So if you go to my YouTube, the um probably gonna welcome be the uh What is it again? It's it's Samoan uh what's the last part? Uh the one. Just all one word. Okay, I got it um so if you oh go yeah i see the the, the the uh all right so what do we got a, a like a succubus in the background a omega looks like an omega symbol with arrows mm -hmm. that's actually yeah. uh my symbol uh that i my branding for the uh for like clothing the social media all that that's uh Is that nordic runes where is that the uh the circle the, around the uh the late the the, the female uh which, which or is it just the um i don't know what it's called i, I called it a succubus um, oh are you talking about the frame picture in the upper left yeah oh, okay so that is uh that is an artist that's curb crawler ghost uh so his art has a lot of uh imagery that's probably the only thing that's even close to anything um he does a lot of like demonic anti-religious imagery uh yeah I, I frame that uh because it's it's a very bds and um so like on the other shelf you can see there's like this apparatus that looks kind of kind of looks like a metal penis um for lack <laughs> of a better word that's that's a, a bds and um uh shackle so but yeah that does yeah have... i mean this this is more like art to me it doesn't scream like satanism but yeah. obviously i can see why people um could get that image but no i mean i'm pretty like let's say no no baphomet no uh mm -mm. no aleister crowley but so no. i'm i'm curious about that like so do you prescribe to any of those philosophies no of the no mm -mm. i uh I really, I just, um, I, I, I guess to summarize when people have asked me and I, I have this thing, I've said it like numerous times over the years to people when people will like say, well, what are you? Whether it be in regards to religion or politics or style, even like if they're like, oh, you're Gothic or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't like labels too much because I feel like, um, if I tell you box, yeah, exactly. They everyone has a preconceived notion of what that is. So you are automatically setting yourself up for failure telling someone, you know, I'm a I'm a I'm a Pentecostal or I'm this yeah. or that. So I just tell them, you know, kind of like what we're doing. I'm like, just talk to me about it. Ask me questions. I'd rather that. Uh so to I guess I'm the same way. I'm the same way with Christianity. I honestly don't have a uh don't have like a certain sect that I fall in. Um I I yeah, it's the hardest question when people are like, "Oh, what um, what denomination are you?" And if you say non-denominational, that's a denomination nowadays. Yeah, yeah. So it's like I don't know. I'm all of them. I'm all denominations. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I I, I, think I like a little of everything. Speaking with you just in this short time, I mean, I I think you were probably uh the, the truest just based on your answers and like i said this short time that we've spoken probably the truest form uh and i have met a few in my like i have there's a dude on my facebook that follows me that mm. i'm fairly certain he's a friar oh 
and it, like he oh. dra he's dressed like it and and it's not like a a bit <laughs> like he, yeah he's commented on every everything that i've posted that's been uh like religious in nature he's like you know you make really good points sam i really like to 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 hear this we're trying our best to re-educate our people in 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 this regard and that that always warms my heart to to see that uh but to kind of i guess uh solid solid or more uh clearly answer your question about like what i believe i i'm more uh just power agnostic of, uh, I, yeah i guess uh to to summarize it um lack of belief because there hasn't been proof and i'm more um i think wouldn't it be uh cause like ricky jarvis has said like atheist agnostic because yep yeah the, that's the way that's... i yeah so that i have a i have a problem with um the word ag agnostic because um if you want to get down to it everyone's an agnostic because mm -hmm. you know you, how how do you know for sure you could just you know ask them a million questions until they don't know and then okay well you're agnostic on this but it's like most agnostics i think are more towards the atheist side i think a true like if you were to just say i'm completely agnostic mm -hmm. it would be someone that absolutely doesn't have any beliefs in in the form of they don't believe that god exists they don't believe god doesn't exist they just truly don't know and mm -hmm. they haven't found any evidence to prove push them otherwise but also i feel like they would have to be open to either side yeah if you're truly agnostic and it seems to me like most people that call themselves agnostic more atheist were, leaning yeah they were christians and now they're agnostic because you know it sounds cuter and it's, yeah. it's more intellectually honest and so it's like, yeah, they want to seem like they're, you know, intellectuals, and mm -hmm. so they'll say agnostic, but they're really atheists because they don't believe it. And I think a lot of people, like with, when you said uh, it's cuter, there's a lot yeah. of people. Uh, I, I'm gonna attach this to the 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 video where you originally found me from. I, did you, out of curiosity, did you scroll through and read some of those other comments that people left? Yeah, yeah, I did. I did read a few. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I don't know if you picked up on this. I'm assuming you you gleaned to a certain extent because your approach. I I, I didn't say this to you, but I, I said it on a stream uh, when I had kind of announced that we were going to have this conversation. Um, so as I said in the beginning, like being on the internet a long time, I know how most of the time people, the title and the description very purposeful very clickbaity i will i will uh admit to that out the gate yeah, on that oh yeah um, on it all day it was a 15 minute video of a personal opinion and i state that in the first Great. like minute uh and the overwhelming amount of people who because i can look at average time watched average time watched is i think two minutes and 32 seconds uh so the fact that they got to that point where yeah. i state that and still were like really mad that I didn't structure it in the way that they would prefer. They expected going into it that I was going to summarize it, like listed bullet point reasons. some sort of proof. Yeah. 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 Like some sort of and insurmountable proof. Yeah. I, I was very surprised uh, that, that they came at that hard. Uh, I mean, I shouldn't be, but with, in regards to you specifically, um, you know, having a lot of interactions with people on the internet where I was just like, oh, send me an email. And I was like, let me see if he's willing to put in the work, which is not hard. I'm, just, I'm assuming you went to like just the YouTube and went to the email and contact. But like most yeah. people, when you when you hit them with that, they're like, I don't know. So I was like, oh, OK, this dude. And then as we talked through Discord, I was like, oh, he seems on the up and up. He's not he's not trying to troll. He actually wants to have an, an genuine conversation which i love i love that's why also uh i think it's uh important to point out there was uh actually somebody else who came well i didn't come from that video they've been on a couple of my videos but they started popping up in my religious uh content they were a christian that converted to islam um and they kept talking to me about uh contradictions or they were claiming contradictions and i'm like you are seeming to misunderstand i'm not talking about the quran i'm talking about abrahamic 
religions as a whole, yes, but I'm specifically referring to the Bible, King James. And uh, they got, uh, they started diving in to, the, I guess, my stuff, like looking me up. They found the movie I was in way, way back. And they were like kind of supportive uh, on other videos. And then they would be antagonistic on the religious stuff, which is fine. Uh, it got to the point where I had to ban them from the YouTube, which I never do. Uh, unless you start like sowing seeds of dissent about shit that's just not true and like spreading rumors. I'm not here for that. Uh, and then they went to my Facebook and did the same thing, typed like a six paragraph long thing and I just banned them. Then they messaged my wife. Oh, I'm man. like, yeah. So, uh, doing deep, deep digging. Yeah. On yeah. There's, there's all types. I mean, I get it. This topic is, uh, very sensitive for a lot of people. Uh the the funniest comments the ones I, I did read there was a bunch of people i'm sure with the same like uh feed as 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 mine mm -hmm. that ended up on your on your video and were like how did i get here like how yeah, did you show yeah. up in my feed? like <laughs> they, they thought that was i laughing. had control over it or something <laughs> no, that that was funny because i was like well that's how i got here yeah there but, was uh yeah. there was one person who uh even tried to go further with it and they were like I see what you're doing, YouTube. Almost as if YouTube is like trying to disseminate Satanist shit to. And I'm like, dude, I don't understand what what you're going on here. And I, yeah. I sorry, that's not how it works. No, no. I even I even <laughs> uh, tried to <laughs> impart on them. I'm like, if YouTube is like trying to do what you're saying they're doing. Why are you they wouldn't using, be doing it with this? Well, but why are you using it? If you suspect them of being an oh, yeah, agent right. of Satan, why right. are you? So anyway. Well, honestly, like this is probably a unpopular Christian opinion, but I think now I'm not trying to like, you know, gas you up or anything, mm. but I think your approach, the way you you speak and your honesty with your beliefs is even on a Christian standpoint, is far less dangerous, even to a to a Christian, mm -hmm. than say a false doctrine of Christianity, where it's like cuddles and rainbows, and you can do whatever you want. Yeah, but it's it's um, under a guise of deceit. Yeah, and like there's a there's a sense of genuinity and honesty, which uh, is refreshing to me. And mm -hmm. I've never had a problem with um, approaches like yours or disagreeing with people like yours mm -hmm. it's more of i honestly argue more with christians than i do with atheists or satanists yeah but there are um there are some atheists that have the same it's almost like the same spirit that christians have where they're arrogantly believe that science can explain everything and mm -hmm. explain everything all it. the way that's all it is right it's just a right. reversal same people they're just on a different side mm-hmm like if they were Christians, they would be the um, you know, the higher than the higher than all like Catholics that, you know, do everything perfectly and you're all damned because you don't do think the way I think. Yeah. Um Yeah. Well, enough of the uh the hashing out about all the people yeah. that were no. <laughs> that bother us. Yeah. Um but, I'm gonna uh I'm gonna send you a video and then I'm gonna go smoke a cigarette if that's all right with you. So it yeah. takes me like two, three minutes. Uh it's just a TikTok video. I think you'd appreciate it. Uh we could talk about it when you get back if you want. But uh you kind of I feel fall into the same category of this guy. Uh guy's name is James Tallarico. Never heard of this dude. He's a, apparently a Texas state representative. He popped up on my TikTok last night. He's a former middle school teacher and he, he says a proud progressive, which when someone says that kind of makes me frightened, uh, cause that word, you know, um, that can mean a lot of things. Uh, but the clip that I'm going to send you was very, uh, surprising. Uh, he's preaching and, uh, what looks like a church and he's talking about, uh, Christianity, uh, and he himself is Christian. Um, but it's the first time I've seen somebody preach in a long time that actually seems to know what they're talking about. Kind of similar to you. Uh, like I said before, people like yourself, 
I enjoy speaking with, even though we don't agree on like where we're going to go when we die. We don't agree on who our creator or that there is a creator. Um, we still have more in common in, in, in the concept of being a good person. Yeah. Being good person, communication, morality, even if we don't necessarily concur on where, where those things, where it comes from. from. Yeah. Right. So, all right. All right. Yeah. I'm back. I, uh, remember I mentioned the, uh, the, the kid on Omi TV, uh, right one one of the things uh, again a, a compliment to yourself is when he originally was talking to me i mean we we talked about a lot of stuff i asked him a lot of uh i guess i don't want to say like gotcha questions but like antagonistic because uh it came at me i, I want to say fairly aggressively uh and i uh I'm talking about i guess like why does the Bible condone slavery stuff like that? And all of his uh, justifications and reasoning was him just quoting scripture. And I'm glad that you don't do that. Uh, I'm okay. Like even prior to our call, I I, I pulled up like a, a resource so I could like search because I wasn't sure if you, if you were going to. Um, but it's it's weird because it's like why use that to defend your stance or, uh, you know, bolster your stance when you're talking to somebody who doesn't prescribe the same well, that, value. That's, I was just about to say that. And that's the whole thing. Like, <laughs> you know, I would be getting flack from Christians, um, which I actually do mm. because there are some Christians that will say like, you should speak as an Oracle of God and you should qu quote scripture and nothing else. And that's how you make your claims. But for me, it just, there's something that just doesn't sit right with me because I don't know whether it's like an empathetic thing, but I know I can feel the, the, the message not getting across because I know the person doesn't believe the source mm -hmm. that I'm preaching it from. So I have to like come to there. I have to like, like you have to meet find them. a common ground. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. So, I mean, if I, if you were a Christian, then I would have to like provide you proof of like why I believe what I believe in it would have to be from the Bible. And if it's not from the Bible, it would have to be from some sort of accurate description of Jesus's teachings. Yeah. Um, but if you want to throw, like, I don't listen, man, I am like, I'm pr I probably had most, a lot of these questions myself. If you want to throw those gotcha questions at me and see how I answer them, like I'm totally open. You're not, yeah. there's, you're not going to offend me. No, and no. I, as I far can... as my, Yeah. I can tell as much. And like I said, I, I, I appreciate it. It's always, uh, like conversations like this. I, I think a good, uh, like just in, in the short time that we've spoken, I would, you would be one of the people that I would invite over to the house, uh, for like a party or something for beers and, and yeah. be more than happy to like sit over a fire and, and have like, a philosophical discussion uh, about stuff like this. And I have friends like that. I, I have a friend the other day who he himself, I didn't know we've been friends for three years, four years, maybe. And he he's helped me work on the car. He's very uh, adept at mechanical shit. I am not. Um, I had actually a tensioner on my serpentine belt fly off my fucking car. I called oh, him man. and I was like, Hey man, I know. And he's like, I got you. And he came right over, helped me fix it was just like right you just you just owe me a twisted team man and i'm like really i'm <laughs> like you know so he's a really good dude but uh right, yeah. when we were sitting there talking one day just he was like you know i'm christian right and i'm like no <laughs> you never <laughs> that's never come up and he's like and then we went from talking about that and we were kind of like a conversation like me and yours went from that to talking about simulation theory to like all oh, of yeah. this nice. it, was, it was very Easy real very, one. yeah it was very engaging yeah, and like yeah. i'll flat out tell him i was like you know i don't have answers to xyz uh i was like we can theorize all day i was like i love having these conversations i think it's human i think it's healthy right and on. so yeah. yeah oh yeah i've done that for many years with friends just we call it like wording out mm -hmm. just like philosophy and just you know tr adventuring into possible narratives or you know explanations for the world but yeah it, i i'll admit my uh i kind of stop it's my beliefs have gotten 
narrower as I've gotten older because mm-hmm. I've come to what I've believed to be the truth. And when I was young, I was always looking for it. Mm-hmm. And I, there's, there is a part of, uh, and I, I'm still growing, which is, it is good, but there's a part of my young mind that I miss because I can find myself sometimes being calloused, if that's the right word, or, or calcified Mm -hmm. in some of my beliefs. And, um, I just remember the, the awe that I used to have when thinking about these things and philosophizing or whatever have you be um and it just i I felt more things just felt more magical i guess and now um yeah so it's a little bit more rudimentary pessimistic sometimes and i just i hope i'm still growing so i'll gain some of that back but at the same time i i enjoy a lot better like of the person that i am today rather than the you know tumultuous like emotion filled person i was as a younger person yeah. so there's pros and cons do you do you think part of that uh if, if i'm understanding correctly part of the like that wonder kind of uh or awe subsiding do you think that's due to i mean because i i don't know your personal life and how much you interact uh with, with others that believe contrary to you um I still get that a lot. And I think that's due to my purposeful uh, interactions with people that don't um, don't prescribe to my beliefs and aren't within my bubble. Um, so like when they it's it's like as you start talking about it, uh, like contrary to it, without using the word awe, like to me, I, I like it's like a it's palpable like it's it's spicy like you can feel it on your lips yeah Yeah. as you're talking about it um and admittedly i don't it's not all the time i don't as much as i would it's not as much as i would like uh but anytime it comes up i i just put all of myself into it because i'm like you know i I don't know the next time i'm gonna get (laughs) this opportunity uh would you would Uh, you say that's that's yeah probably I, i think um i i I, contrary to what you'd probably believe my life is like, I actually don't have a lot of like-minded people mm-hmm. that uh, that think like me or have the same beliefs. I'm actually not okay. in like a Christian sort of community. I, a lot, most of my friends are, if you call them, if you wouldn't call them atheists, you can call them lukewarm Christians. I got you. I, I'm sure you know what that means. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's it's not. But the the what you said was definitely true. Like there's these stimulating conversations that I have with a couple of friends that I haven't talked to in a while, but yeah, still still do once in a while. And those those conversations are like, yeah, that's it's great. And I wish I could do more of that. And within the Christian community, it's it's for me, I haven't connected with any um like churches. I've gone to a lot and even people my own age, but I it seems very um like on the surface and I, I never get like I'm not like in there. Yeah. So I'm kind of like an outsider, but I do a lot of research on my own and I've I pray, I you know, I you know s- prescribe to like the teachings of Jesus and find fulfillment in that. Yeah. But as far as like interpersonal communication, it's I don't get a lot of it. Okay. Um so yeah, I mean, yeah, basically the answer is yes. So you kind of but- like you, you privately worship in a way you don't, you're not, at, you're not at church every Sunday, but you, you worship at home. I, I do go to churches, okay. but, um, it's dependent on like, I go to different churches. So, uh, I don't have like a, like a certain church that I'm always at that I'm a uh, part of. Okay, okay. I'm still kind of trying to find my group. If you say yeah. that, cause I don't believe like, I'm also like, as far as denomination goes, I, I think there's true Christians in all denominations. Yeah. So absolutely. I've met great like Catholics. I've met great um, Protestants and even like people like outside on the fringe, which probably some denominations you haven't heard of, like um, what is it called? The uh, something of God. There's like Seventh Day Adventists. There's Church of God, um, Assembly of God. Right. They're more like. Um, 
Pentecostal mm-hmm. or charismatic, t- the speaking in tongues sort of stuff. Yeah. Which I don't, I don't, yeah, I haven't experienced that, but I'm, I really want to like explore all, all the different um, types of churches, if you'd say, or denominations yeah. and, you know, just like be within the communities and see what I can learn from them. No, I think that's a good way to be. Yeah. Um, did you want me to, to try and tackle your, your questions? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Let's, let's do that. Uh, so your first one was, do I believe in a higher power? Um, and, but then you elaborated and you said, this could be angels, demons, aliens, basically anything of higher intelligence than us humans. Um, so like, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll separate, you know, the, the, the primary question and then your, your secondary, uh, exposition, uh, no, I, I don't. Um, but in the regard of like, with just, do you, do I believe in a higher power? I, I view that, uh, kind of broadly as, as like a God, um, okay. now, um, angels, demons, aliens, uh, aliens, I think are to, to say that that's not a possibility, uh, I think is, is kind of doing yourself a disservice because of the, how, how large and expansive the universe is to, um, but again, like me saying aliens, a lot of people automatically in their mind, uh, start, you know, uh, pulling up these, these visuals of these, like, you know, gray aliens and, I just, mm-hmm. I view aliens in a, in a very broad, you know, anything that is alien to, it, it could be, it could be fucking bacteria. Uh, I do believe that there is a distinct possibility that there is, uh, a, a race of beings that are probably more advanced than us, um, that exists probably very far away from us. Because again, like I said, the universe being as expansive as it is, it's ludicrous to believe that we're the only intelligent life, um, I believe that that is the case that uh they don't want anything to do with us because i sure as fuck wouldn't um if they are aware of us even um so uh yeah i mean I, does that does that kind of summarize i know that's it does it it, it gives me more questions but okay. um let me think I, I wrote some stuff down but let me just go back to the, qu- the questions i asked because i just um Okay, so really quick, uh, do you do are would you consider yourself an anti realist? That so yeah, that was that was attached to your second question. Yes. Um yeah. I had never heard that term, so I actually had to like Good. look into that. Um <laughs> and I guess for uh like anybody listening so the definition of anti-realism is the opposition to or deliberate eschewal or of realism especially in art or and literature do you think that's that's a good summarization uh no no okay <laughs> no, i mean just, i mean no, no it's it's yeah it's a good google summarization yeah but there's a lots of uh it seems lots... very like i don't know i don't know if i want to use lofty as a it's it's the fact but... that you haven't heard it is fine so mm. we're, i can i can speak to you on that page it's basically like philosophy bros that have asked themselves what is real too many times um. and have come to the conclusion that um nothing is real and everything is real at the same time and it's yeah it's basically a rabbit hole yeah it um, sounds of, like it yeah of of like intellectuals or pseudo intellectuals that don't want to um submit to like platonic ideas of okay. plato which is like the world of form so if you have any experience of like re, uh like researching plato it was like plato would say like a chair okay well we have chairs there's all different chairs but this distinct thing that we all see as a chair comes from a place higher which is what he called the world of forms mm-hmm. which a christian will view that as the heavens Mm -hmm. Um, and basically all knowledge and understanding comes from above and is delivered down. So everything on our plane, so to speak, is almost a mirror or a reflection of what is above. And this is, if you've been in, um, any of those like occultic or esoteric, um, 
literature, if you've read any of that stuff, you've probably heard the saying, as above, so below. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's basically where that comes from, and that's okay. um, like Kabbalah, Hermeticism. Um, those are like the, the dark arts. I, yeah. I, I, that's the, well, that's what, the, what I view as the, the dark arts. But um, the, So, okay, so basically, here, I'll, I'll ask you this. Um, do you believe... Um, right and wrong is subjective or objective that that's something that i kind of wrestle with because it's a gotcha by the way i'm warning yeah, you it's a yeah yeah gotcha. no I, I know that um <laughs> that's why i'm kind of like not not even because you're asking the question but i've always um kind of like written written the middle because i feel like uh when it comes to morality we do derive uh morality from from social constructs um mm -hmm. and then a lot of people you know to kind of jump ahead to a certain extent a lot of the discussions that i've gotten because i brought up a, a similar question um but just in in terms of like people thinking or feeling that we get morality from the bible which i vehemently disagree with um i so again come coming from a societal standpoint of like so uh objective you know that we look at things that are put in place or things that are the norms and we agree that that is morally okay or morally not okay and so then consensus yeah and then but there's also the aspect of which i i feel would correct me if i'm wrong fall under subjective uh in terms of your your personal feelings and emotions attached to that that's also so i feel like it borrows a little bit from both that's why i kind of like toe the line which a lot of people will be like no nope, you can't have that and i'm like yep. well y i yep. mean <laughs> you can because yeah. i feel like that's what it is but uh so yeah I, I don't know does that does that answer uh kind of a little bit of both yeah it gives me it gives me like a, a gist on how you think um mm -hmm. which is good so I, I guess like it, it is a hard question and it's if you really boil down to it, it which is the reason why it's a gotcha is because if someone so if you say subjective which an anti-realist would have to say mm -hmm. um which they don't even like to admit they they talk around it yeah. um, because they'll say well what is subjective that's just a um, ideology that you formed in your head and mine is different and it's like oh okay let me just uh like roll on the ground with a lollipop in my hat in my mouth and just go crazy into ins insanity <laughs> it's like that's what it's like talking to the, these yeah. people but um but they're they're smart like these people are like this isn't i don't know if you've heard of the streamer destiny yes 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 yeah he like he's anti-realist he doesn't say it often but um yeah he, uh, he's pressed he i don't know how he I'm, smart dude he is i I'll, I'll say this like about a lot of people and like but using him as an example i will see aspects of a person uh stances that they will uh purport and i'll be like yeah and then i'll see other stuff they say and i'm like no uh yeah. but that doesn't make me dislike the person uh which a lot yeah. of people wrestle with a lot of people nowadays you know with canceling whatever they're very much it has to be and i'm like but that's not that's not human because i mean you you can feel that way everybody's entitled to that. if you feel that that uh that belief or what that person's purporting goes against your views and and you vehemently don't want to like that person that's okay but i feel like that you're doing yourself a disservice because people are so nuanced you can agree with some aspects and you know I'm not going to go out of my way to to watch all of his stuff because of some of the stuff he said where I'm like, nah. And I, I also feel like his his debate tactics are very, very aggressive when they're not needed to be. Super aggressive. Yeah. Well, I mean, it all makes sense when you look at what he believes. Yeah. Um, I didn't because, know that. Well, yeah, it's it's more than just that, but that it, it's like that's the core. So if if he's coming from a stance of like truth is something that is just um a perspective of your your the individual mm -hmm. so there's no really rules that he has to follow he's basically under the the law of do whatever you want yeah 
Which and that sounds so there's, dangerous as fuck to me. <laughs> okay, well then you're yeah. So you're you're more on the in the middle than I would have have assumed to mm-hmm. be honest. Just like from the first video, the the God isn't real video. Yeah, I would have assumed you're more on that side if mm. you could put it to a side. You know what I'm saying? I can see that. Um, so yeah, so I guess uh, okay, so oh oh, we can go like the reason why it's so hard with this question. Um, and it's it's super easy for a Christian, and I don't like using the like um the God answer because it's so easy and it's like an easy win, yeah. but it, it is a, it, it is something to consider because here's the premise. So if morality, what we believe is right and wrong is only a collection of a consensus or, or a democracy, mm-hmm. then you would have to conclude that the, that morality in itself or truly right and wrong, evil and good is just a culmination of a vote and it comes down to a vote so 51 percent wins and 49 percent loses and i am definitely not gonna throw that into the the polls for majority of the things that i think because i think mob mentality almost always is wrong yeah so i that is crazy to me and then if you want to take it another step you could say well Let's not say a consensus, but how about elected to only the smartest individuals that we have? And who that may be, well, that's a little bit more tricky, but we'll just say that we have a group and we have a a way of determining who's capable of determining these things. Mm -hmm. And we're going to trust those people to make those decisions for us. And we're going to put use that as the pinnacle of authority and where we get these doctrines from. And you can use that as sort of objective and you can say no it's objective and appeal to that sort of governing force yeah um i think when people normal people think about these questions i think it's that one without all of the you know mental gymnastics i think they kind of think well whatever like the best people believe yeah that's objectively the truth Um, no i'd agree with that yeah but um the problem is is if there is god if there is even if even if there is higher intelligence than us even if you don't believe in god but you believe in aliens or extraterrestrial life or any sort of higher intelligence is the important um, word then they would basically by definition have authority over us by being smarter and having more wisdom and more intellect Mm -hmm. and we would be under them and um basically logically have to submit to their their rules Mm -hmm. and if we don't then we could just you know we could go against them and see where that goes yeah see where that goes and (laughs) but i mean basically like might is right in Mm -hmm. in the end of the day and whoever has the more power is gonna is gonna determine what is right and wrong yeah yeah which so I mean, that's a little <laughs> kind of uh just tail end of of what you just said might is right and uh i think it's it's an important clarification uh, from my from my standpoint i guess i when when you say that immediately what is conjured my mind is is the bible and how the bible has Catholic church be, yeah how it's become to be such a mainstay through violence yep. and, and, and yep. stuff like that uh which like talking to some people um my my old boss before i got promoted uh he's very um he's one of those people that when we would debate um we would get to a point where it would be very circular and i would tell him that i'd be like dude we're not getting anywhere like you're just saying the same things and i'm i'm refuting what you're saying and then you just pivot and then you go back to a circular you pivot i'm like it's just annoying um and he was like well at the end of the day you just you just don't understand and i'm like no i do i just don't agree and right he trying to get him to understand that like well the reason that you believe going back to why i 
even brought up, you know, might is right. Is I'm like, isn't it like coincidental that you believe this because you grew up in Mexico and obviously Mexico has a very Catholic uh okay. christian like combined but more catholic than christian like right. you know that's that's very ingrained in their society so isn't it convenient that you and i know i'm not the first to bring that argument up that i, I know ricky jarvis and uh people like him have said you know it's very convenient that you believe in this god and not krishna or you know any of the others because of the, the locale uh and that's again going back to the might is right um it makes me kind of wonder this is not even really a question just kind of just yeah speak. yeah no i'm hearing you but uh it makes me kind of like hypothetically sometimes i'll think and be like what what would the world look like if america and like we didn't have a, a lot of the you know like the spanish inquisition and, and and stuff like that and colonialism what if it was when when a lot of these explorers came over what if they all believed in like you know i don't know let, let's say let's use krishna what, what if they believed in in the indian gods when they came mm -hmm. over like what would the world look like so i don't know i always like definitely to, be different yeah yeah it would be different for sure but um hmm <clears throat> did you want to go to your uh no, I'm thinking. I'm, oh, okay. No, it's making me think. Um, so, do you? What is? I think this would be um, helpful. Do you want to give your um, summarization of what you think the Christian worldview is? And you can be as offensive as you want. I don't yeah, mind. Yeah. Uh, I I guess. I'll, I'll preface with a lot of this is, is from personal interaction um, with, mm -hmm. with a lot of Christians. And I know this, this doesn't, uh, I'll be, this doesn't summarize all Christians. I th and unfortunately speaking uh, objectively, I think it's important to note that the loudest voices in the room are not the, always the right ones. Unfortunately though, a lot of the loudest voices will usually be the ones at the forefront of 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 the i guess battle for lack of a better term um and i, I feel like there's people that are trying to change that uh, as we talked about and that that talk of that guy i sent you but uh the i guess the christian worldview on the surface is very much a a world of of forgiveness but it's very surface level it's it's very you know we're accepting but you have to come to our side. You have to believe what we believe. And if you don't, then you obviously don't understand or you just haven't read it, which is just such a like minimalist way to view it rather than understanding that someone can understand, like I was mentioning with, with my old boss uh, and choose to not agree. Uh, so, I guess that as a as an overarching theme is we're for we are all about forgiveness and acceptance. We want you to to come and be a part of our Christian family and uh, accept the word of God and accept Him in your heart and worship Him. Um, but if you don't, then the answer is like I said that you just don't understand or you haven't read enough. Uh, I think connecting with that though is it's very nuanced, obviously, but uh the loudest voices with the lately with like and that's why i sing that TikTok is the christian nationalism where it's mm -hmm. it seems to have this like vein of uh racism um you know you know the way i always view that it's like uh it's like the patriots or the the buccaneers it's like your team like yeah it's uh if you're not on this uh, side you're on the wrong side yeah, it, but they, it's almost it's almost a disservice to and and a complete um, blaspheming and sacrilegious um, doing doing ill justice to like what the faith is because they're they're basically rooting for it like a sports team mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. like my team like they want to win yeah right? yeah like like when they don't understand that the the god that we worship is one that got martyred killed crucified and the fall and almost all of the early followers died in the same way and didn't fight back and were mm -hmm. basically looked at 
to to the mainstream as like losers yeah. like you know we they lost their lives but that's that's not the point if you if you like if you read the bible and that's not the the our our treasures aren't worldly they're not of this world um but yeah so i i guess what would you um when i meant when i went worldview like mm-hmm. um so what would you say a christian would view other religions as oh like wrong. myths fairy wrong, tales yeah, yeah. Or, no just no because if they if they viewed it as myths or fairy tales then they would have to turn that that mirror uh in on themselves and that would be doing them a disservice and they know they wouldn't lose that argument because well, you know uh, what if they said the bible is is written inspired by god but the other religions were just um, made up fairy tales to give people answers for what they didn't understand do you think that's something that they would think yeah yeah i mean uh i yeah i i would be more apt like how to would say, a christian okay go ex- on no i get what you're saying like how would they how would they explain away uh no i think that's a good uh summarization i i'm more used to them just being it's just wrong and then not so it's elaborating wrong, they don't further know why okay. uh, or, or just choosing not to elaborate further because you and i both know that like once you start to journey down that road of like listing why then you start getting into this very nuanced conversation, which for a lot of Christians is very difficult because they're not very educated on other religions. They just, right. they might know like a couple things, but they do. I mean, even, even you go so far as even their own religion. Most Christians that I've interacted with do not know the Bible very well. They might know some some books out of it, their favorite parts of scripture, and they go to church every Sunday and they, they try to embody a good life. But mm-hmm. when they discuss it with somebody philosophically, they fail every time. The uh, That kid that I mentioned that I spoke with, almost every question that I asked him, we it, it was impossible for him to stay on topic. He would, and I get that it'll it'll go different branches, absolutely. But I always try and return it, like if we don't get to the 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 actual answer, uh, I try to bring it back because I know I'm long winded. I talk for hours, and again, go down different avenues. But you know, the whole point of it is like to try and get to somewhat of an answer, even if you have to be like, I don't have one. Uh, but a lot of the time, they they have difficulty with being like, well, I don't I don't know. Um, he kept re- okay. referencing scripture. Uh, so that's, that's my experience is referencing scripture or, or throwing out some, uh, very vague or interpretive, uh, okay. you know? Yeah. So, I mean, my take on that, on the people that you're speaking of, cause I, I know what you're talking about is I think they can, they can be, be right with the, the wrong answers. Mm-hmm. Um, like I, I agree on them about Christianity. I believe on the, with them about, um, I agree with them about Jesus and who he was and that he rose from the dead mm-hmm. and that God can forgive our sins. But um, as far as some of their other worldviews, it can get very secular. And this is mm-hmm. what I was talking about. Um, there's, uh, I mean, the early Christians were pretty open-minded and they're pretty, Um, they weren't saying the other religions aren't real and they're just worshiping like, um, like voodoo dolls and stuff. They very, um, seriously took those, those other gods as real. Mm -hmm. Um, they were just false gods. So if you look at like the Greek pantheon of however many gods or deities they have, um, us as Christians, we view those as fallen angels. Um, oh, okay. Are you aware of that kind of hypothesis? No, I haven't heard that in a, uh, oh. I don't want to say ever, but I feel like it's been a long time since someone has has put that forth. Yeah, so it, I mean, it goes from the start. So if if God created first before humans, that He created all the angels, and um, this is another one up for debate, but I'm pretty sure that chron- the chronologically the angels fell, and then. Um, Sorry, um, no, the, the angels fell after humans were made. Mm-hmm. So, um, but basically our world as we know it before, um, 
after the flood. Um, these these beings were all around, but let me. Sorry, go ahead. All right, I just wrote like a little bit of to keep me on track. Um, so yeah, so basically what I said is I personally and a lot of others that um, agree with this biblical chronology um, don't view other religions as just faults in the sense of um, information, but in the sense of um, like their what they prescribe should not be followed. Not that it's not real or it didn't happen or it's just myths and fairy tales. Mm -hmm. So if you want to talk specifics like um, Hindu or uh. the Greek ones that I mentioned, those beings that they were worshiping, um, I believe were real. And I believe they would have certain ways of contacting these beings, whether it be through medicinal herbs, going into trance-like states, contacting these, what we're calling them now is like um, interdimensional beings, but that's like a new like quantum physics term. Mm -hmm. um, but basically gods, you know, they're, they're gods. Um, they were real and they were getting instruction from those beings and that's where these religions came from. Um, where those beings came from is, this is from Genesis, is um, the fall of the angels, which um, was after they lusted after the female humans. Yeah. And a third of the angels fell, mated with human beings, and produced this sort of hybrid demigod like um, creatures called Nephilim yeah. and giants. This was like the days of giants. And um, those were like the, the Hercules, where like the story of Hercules comes from. The, these are like demigods. They're like half man, half angel, half god, mm -hmm. half man, half god. Um, obviously, these beings would have been extremely powerful and had a lot of influence in, in early um, times. And, and this is where I think these stories came from and, and where they originated from. Um, so I don't, like, when people say, like, oh, is Christianity the only true religion? Or is, the, is it the only real one? Like, no, I think they're all real, which yeah. is maybe, maybe not so uh, popular of, a, of an opinion. But I mean, what, you, what I, you're saying makes sense in, in, the, in the nature logically. of... Logically. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. I am familiar with, with what you're talking about, and I know there's uh, a lot of people who believe that... Uh, like kind of like the Anunnaki uh, master slave yep. race kind of. Uh, yep. Um, and there, there is obviously like a lot of lore with that as well. Right. That, right. that coincides. It's very interesting. And I, but yeah, like you said, logically speaking, if, if you prescribe to it, or even if you just read it, uh, it, it tracks that that is, you know, um, I still think it, it is important to note that like, and I, and I'm, I feel like you'd agree with me on this that there there isn't a verifiable way to know which ones which. Isn't? Did you, you know? say isn't? Yeah, there isn't a way necessarily right. to you know be like okay, well this one is a fallen. I mean, unless you were there or had had direct interaction with all, you know. But... No, I mean you could never you could never know. I mean that's not your it, and I, and that's another thing. It's like well these people that didn't know so to speak um kind of sucks for them because they followed the wrong god yeah yeah um and some of them had personal interactions with them and there's there's a actually uh i don't know how much you know about mormonism but uh, joseph bit. smith yeah yeah he he uh he found one of those one of those uh those beings uh -huh. um and he got his whatever tablets I don't know how much, see, this is the stuff that I don't know, like, like there's certain things I believe in and there's certain things that I just have to hypothesize about. Like, I don't know how that came to be, but in my mind, it sounds like the same stuff that was happening before where he's contacting some sort of spiritual being that led him down the wrong path. So I don't believe that that's from God. I don't believe that that angel was from yeah. God. I believe it was a fallen angel. Um, I'm, I'm going to be honest for context. 
I a hundred percent believe that Mormonism. I be, I think he made it up. Uh, he made it up. Yeah, I think he I made it know. up. The reason I <laughs> he, say that is just because the, you look into his past. Yeah, he was like I, a snake oil salesman. <laughs> he used to like yeah. trick people. Yeah, when you when you start like putting that together, and then I mean, just surface level, like, oh, this guy found these gold plates, and no one else was allowed to see them, but. You know, I mean, there yeah. was like maybe two people that saw him, but shit like that, it, it kind of, it, it bears a lot of uh, resemblance to like Scientology. And uh, I mean, Scientology, I don't think is fair necessarily, uh, but at the same time, I think it's necessary to, for comparison purposes. But no, I mean, I, I, I still, I still think like what, what you're saying logically is, is, is sound, uh, on the basis yeah. of what we're talking about. So, yeah. Okay. Well, that's cool. Um, I guess we're, we kind of branched off from the whole like morality uh, yeah. thing. <laughs> I know you um, got like about 20 minutes left. Did you want to try and hit that last question? And Yeah. Yeah. I was just looking at that. So, um, yeah, let's just go. You, you can go for it. Okay. So, so you asked if God was real and Jesus really rose from the dead, would I become Christian? Some people don't like Christianity. It's not so much a matter of proof, but rather a dislike in behavior and attitudes of the church and its followers. So, I, I mean, I think you, you know uh, very much like with what you're saying at the tail end of that. Uh, the, my answer is no. Uh, based on the God that is described in the Bible and um the actions that were taken and instructions i i feel very much that the god that is described in the in the king james version of the bible is a very petulant uh child and kind of like mirrored like when you were saying like you were curious like why would you do this this stuff there's when i i always bring it back simply uh Again, like you were saying, like, why would you do this? Or are you just bored? Um, it very much seems that way. Uh, I understand that there's a lot of good behaviors that are, um, I don't know, maybe encouraged, but uh, inspired by people following the Bible. A lot of good people and good actions come out of worship of God and Christianity. But at its core, if this being were to come down and be like, hey, I'm here. This is all real. I'd be like, well, you can go go fuck off. Because I, I feel like the things that have, again, been done currently in the Bible. Like, I don't have to just use the Bible as, but that's my primary reference point. Um, I'll give you I'll give you an example that that's like current, I guess. Uh, this is actually funny because I brought this up to this was a conversation between me and my mother. Uh, I think like a couple weeks ago, she I started kind of reading off some of the comments from YouTube. I wanted to see like her take. And uh, she started talking about miracles. And she relayed a story to me where her car had broken down on a street corner and these three large men appeared out of nowhere and helped her move her car out of danger and i was like well that's awesome uh i'm happy that they were able to do that for you i said i think an important question that i have for you though is why is it why do you think that in that moment because chances are uh logically speaking that this is probably happening at the same moment why do you think it is that God chose, because she was obviously, I think you're able to pick up on the fact she believes that those were more or less angels or maybe angels, not. Yeah. yeah, maybe if not, then, you know, they were inspired by God to be motivated to help her. I was like, why do you think it is that God took mercy on you at that moment in time, but chose not to take mercy on, let's say, a child that was being brutally raped? Yep. And uh, she didn't have an answer for that. And uh, that's, so that's, you know, I think that summarizes a little bit better, like, because that whole notion kind of conveys that uh, this person is more important in that moment in time than this person. And if that is in fact how this God operates, which is what is shown in the Bible or dictated to a large degree, 
I don't think that that's a creature that is deserving of me obligating my time, my worship, my love or interest in, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Um, so, so basically, so, okay. So if, if this stuff were true and like you said, he were to come down, mm -hmm. you would not be enthusiastic about worshiping him following him and would what if the consequence of that were were hell or death would you would you go to death yeah. in in pride and knowing that you were doing the right thing and you weren't going to follow a maleficent being like that yeah i feel so or i i yeah i feel that way i mean I kind of joke sometimes even talking to my wife about it because my wife feels somewhat similar. I mean, like, she's she's more, uh, I don't even want to say, like, Wiccan. She's not uh, practicing, but her beliefs kind of fall more. New age? Yeah, a little bit more because um, she believes in stuff that I, I don't really have an answer for. Uh, but anyway, mm -hmm. like, we'll, we'll kind of joke on the topic of, like, being sent to hell of that being seeming a more pleasurable experience because of it not uh containing the people well, that we've that's the christians say yeah. they say uh they say like um heaven for someone that hates god would be would be hell yeah yeah uh, i've heard that before i'm not i'm not sure i mean I, I don't know i don't know what it would be like in my mind i don't know how much i should share but because this is kind of like uh beliefs that are not rooted in any sort of truth but i this is some things that i i think about like these are just like hypothesis i'm like mm -hmm. god like when i'm praying sometimes like would it not be better just to like make them slaves or something like yeah anything could be better than hell in my opinion like, yeah, yeah. but like from what i hear about hell or what it could be or what i could imagine if you have the most evil beings ever you could that that you could ever fathom mm. in one place and there's no rules because yeah. god's not there to basically blunt pain and you know a, a organize authority that i can i can imagine some pretty sick stuff oh absolutely <laughs> some of the you know like i'm sure that you've have some imagery of your own you're you're mm -hmm. clearly an artist of yourself and you've definitely seen some you know gore and yeah. uh <laughs> whatever the word is uh you know depraved acts yeah 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 and just imagining that is is tough for me so mm -hmm. in my mind some sort of annihilation would be much better um than an there eternal is, world of suffering right um it's it's something i struggle with because i don't know how it's going to work there there is some hope in my mind because in Revelation, they talk about, um, John talks about throwing hell into the lake of fire, which sometimes gets confused as the same place. Mm -hmm. But um, the the lake of fire essentially should destroy hell and is described as the second death. Mm -hmm. So at least in my mind, it's like, okay, so is it for eternity or is it not? Maybe yeah. it's not eternity, but <laughs> I don't know. No. Um, I, I yeah. also wrestle with, and I know you've mentioned like earlier on, like the topic of hell is somewhat frustrating to you, uh, which I, I agree with. I, you know, have like this, like, why create such a place where you will literally, by his own doctrine, you will send people for just the the crime of non-belief, as well as like, you'll so also So what if he doesn't send them, and this is like kind of, uh, a fear even more is like if if i were to think that god were the source of all good and everything mm -hmm. that's good and love i could i could trust that whoever he sends there is deserving so to speak yeah deserves it like yeah. whatever if if maybe my mind can't comprehend why but that's okay yeah but what if there's another option where they don't he doesn't want them to go there and he doesn't send them there but they somehow accidentally go there by being tricked uh by the powers of lucifer and that's basically what this whole game is about is by tricking people into not be believing yeah. in god and trapping their souls there no honestly. that's entirely possible yeah 
I mean, yeah, that's 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 the fear. Mm -hmm. But but see, I, I fear more of God um, than the devil because you know, one fear, the devil can't take your soul. He, mm -hmm. he tries, he tries to distort you into becoming the most evil version of yourself as possible. Yeah, but um, it's ultimately God allows these things depending on your relationship with Him. And if someone, like you said, you don't want anything to do with God, and I see why, I know what you're, you're talking about, but what I would advise you is just maybe open up the possibility that these attributes that you attribute to God may actually be Something the second else. guy. Yeah. Yeah, the second, Lucifer. Because the Bible describes Lucifer as the God of this world. Mm -hmm. So he almost is like, He's running things in the sense of like a boss, like a CEO, but he doesn't have ownership. Yeah. You know, I had, uh, I guess if, if you want to like kind of conclude on this, because I know you probably have yeah. a couple of minutes. Uh, and I, admittedly, I'm going to forewarn you, it is uh, somewhat heavy uh, and I'm not bringing this. Up. I'm, I'm good with it, uh, but I'll share this with you because it is relative, related, not relative. It's related to what we're talking about with what you said. Um so I, I'll give you the short version. I had a son that was six months old that passed away uh, due to SIDS. And uh, that happened. I woke up to that. I woke up to his dead body. Uh, so that's obviously very, you know, um, earth changing um, or life changing experience for yeah. sure. Um, I, I that cemented my belief, but I was a non-believer before that. Uh, mm -hmm. The reason I bring that up is because I remember there was a girl, uh, she was a stripper, <laughs> uh, that I was dating at the time who was very religious. Um, and she brought up a notion when we were having a conversation about the passing of my son, she said, uh, did you ever think that maybe God allowed that to happen as, as horrible as it is because it shaped you into the person you are today? And that actually you think about that. Ah, uh, I still don't honestly. Ha I I think it's fucked up, to mm -hmm. because logically speaking, I feel like you could shape or mold the person you would want them to be as God, through a different mm -hmm. series of circumstances than maybe uh, doing that. Um, but I think again that that might be my own hubris, you know. I, uh, well, by doing, well, the word you use, doing, like, you, you mean not doing. Yeah, yeah, right? not doing. Uh, yeah. I, you know, but that, the reason I mentioned that is that that's the first person that I had talked to on that topic that had given me pause to consider that as a possibility, which I thought was uh, very articulate, especially the person it was coming from. Um, Great. And the context. So I do definitely uh that there is i i am i'd like to think open-minded enough that there is i consider it even if i might not prescribe to it does that make yeah. sense so, yeah i mean that's a tough one man yeah um yeah so i that's a, that's actually a harder one than um like the rape scenario because mm -hmm. it it involves like a, sort of a natural accident rather than like a human will yeah yeah um but this is gonna. This could like I know we have. We'll probably conclude in like five or ten minutes. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, I'd be interested in talking again if you want. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this would probably be the topic because I think this is where we're gonna have. So far, I don't see it. Yeah, we may have a difference of opinions, but most of the stuff it's like the stuff that you disagree on. I'm not gonna like jam down your throat because they're not things that I have so much proof that i can just think i think that you're just unreasonable for believing the way you do yeah yeah and vice versa but this is where we probably are going to have um i may have more things that could open your mind into other possibilities that maybe you don't think are reasonable at first but if i explain it would mm -hmm. maybe give a little more light upon it yeah. but um like if you take like the whole person getting raped um scenario now god can choose to interfere and i've heard of times where he does mm -hmm. um 
in a situation to avoid that from happening. So there's a man that is a sub or that we would view objectively evil and he wants to do something bad to a young girl. Um, God has a choice, right? He could stop it. He could let it happen. How does, if he were to stop every time someone were to cross the line, so to speak, mm -hmm. where is the line? So is it at like grave sins, like just, you know, hugely evil things? Or oh, what okay. about just every evil little act that we do, like, you know, taking the taking his name in vain or lying or cheating stealing like would would he could we not ask him to stop all of those acts as well yeah um because in essence correct me if i'm wrong kind of where you're going with it is like because then there wouldn't be any sin he would just stop it all kind of right yeah right yeah no free will well we would have free will we just wouldn't be able to enact it and to a certain extent we don't have full free will because there's been times where i've been so angry at someone that if i were to have the chance i would have done something terrible but you know circumstances you know granted it just didn't work out like mm -hmm. that and I, I didn't get the opportunity to whether that was god or whatever or i didn't have the means to do the evil that my heart desired you know i do we don't have full free will in the sense like you curse someone in your head and they're automatically going to get a disease and die yeah. you know you know what i mean like um there is a limit so god limits our power we're not we're not like um extremely powerful as we could be essentially yeah, yeah. um but yeah that's that's like it, it's it, it really it's like well where do we draw the line mm -hmm. and if he doesn't draw a line or he only draws the line when he has favor well then you can say well, this is how i felt personally because i understood that part i i used to here this is a personal thing so i used to laugh at that question of like why doesn't god stop evil i used to think oh these people they're they're just they just don't understand they're they're so un unintelligent and they just can't understand you know the philosophy of that and what that entails mm -hmm. and then some bad shit happened to me yeah and then i was like why me and I said the same thing, and then, and I not only said it, but I felt it, and I and I thought about it, and deeply, like, how could you just not give me a way out? Like, yeah. I always thought, like, you kind of deserved it if something really bad happened to you, like, mm -hmm. you could have stopped it in some way, and I, until I just felt I was at the, at my knees to a disease that I had no power with, no power over, and no one had any answers over it about it, and I just. There was nothing I could do but suffer. Yeah. So um, that was when my view of this really changed. But um, I suppose the the uh, the core is is the same as like where does he draw the line, and how much are we allowing him? Um, or how do or is it, how much are we? inhibiting god from working in our lives by the sin that we're doing and i know people don't like hearing that because it's like well what do you mean i'm deserving the bad things because i'm sinning no, no not i get necessarily. what you're saying right by by um, our actions or inactions we are in essence pushing him away where like potentially right, and for others too like yeah. you are like my sin may hurt you yeah like, yeah so it's almost life. a trickle down in a way right or, well, maybe not trickle down, but trickle in all directions uh, would be a better way to put it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. No, I, like, can, um, I can see that. Uh... So basically, like, the moral of my, like, the way I like to preach the gospel is a lot of people will, pre like, say it in their own way. But I think listening to Jesus, not, not just believing in Jesus in the sense of, like, trusting him and, like, making him your, like, team mascot, like, mm -hmm. which really cringes me. But it's like... <laughs> listening to him like believe what he said like the things he said his moral teachings not don't sin like it's, it's as simple as that don't sin like if you if your arm causes you to sin cut off your arm mm -hmm. if your eye causes you to lust like these really hard teachings i think are extremely beneficial to to everyone um and i these are this is what i that's like the the code that i live by is is jesus's teachings and I, I hope that in following Jesus, and the reason why I say I hope is because I don't have this um, 
sense of guaranteed like i deserve heaven because i i think like paul says we're, we're working towards it mm -hmm. we're working to be um transformed into an image that can be presentable to god and that's the path that i've chosen to go and part of it is because i've looked at life and looked at all of that life has to offer and it's really not um it, it's not that satiable to me um yeah. I, I, it's a little pessimistic, but I think it's, it's good in the sense that I look towards, um, I, I do look towards the afterlife and I'm not so concerned with like my, um, material or, uh, temper, temporal pleasure that I receive in this world. Mm -hmm. Although I'll say in following this way, I've gotten more peace than I ever have when I was a heathen, so to speak, and actually seeking out pleasure. Yeah um kind of weird the way it works like that but no i can see that yeah i don't think that's but, a bad way to have a perspective on it though yeah well it was a good conversation man. yeah man i really appreciate you uh taking the time um i'm gonna try and uh put it together uh this week and either have have it out on uh youtube next weekend or i'm sorry not next weekend next week sometime during the week so sweet you'll be able to give it a listen but uh yeah uh enjoy the right rest on, of your man. day and uh i'm sure we'll we'll connect again after this you as well and yeah if you if you ever want to just like talk to me about anything like um you know reach out feel free yeah same man cool all right well you take it easy all right take care man all right later later